All right, guys. Uh, I've been working on my 1998 SL500, and uh, really what I'm doing is a cooling service. When I bought this car uh, almost three and a half years ago, um, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, at that time uh, flush a cooling system and take care of some things. But you know, as time goes by, um, it kind of got. Uh, put on the back burner and then with COVID-19 the car didn't get really driven last year so um, I'm back to driving it more on a more regular basis it's now summer in Houston it's a lovely 108 degrees here today and uh, wanted to share with you um, some things that I'm doing on the cooling system on my car and if you guys have a R129 um, uh, it's certainly this is uh, going to be a video that uh, I, re I recommend you watch um, some some good uh, points to share with you guys uh, a lot of these cars are now getting to the point where they're almost uh, 30 years old if you have a 91 uh, my car of course is being a 98 is 23 years old when I took my cooling system apart I noticed it had the original thermostat from 1997 um, which is when the car was uh, manufactured and it was stamped right in the the housing the, of the uh, for the where the thermostat is uh, the thermostat housing sorry and even though the coolant may have been flush over the years um, the thermostat was the original one um, same with the radiator and all the hoses and everything else so I thought it was now is a good time to go through everything the car has never run hot it's always actually run you know in the middle of summer here with the AC on sitting in traffic um, you know about 85 and 90 degrees Celsius which is normal for these M119s but um, you know uh, rather than neglect it um, now's a good time as any to to flush your cooling coolant and and make sure that it's properly um, maintained the cooling system on these cars tend to be neglected and a lot of people will do a good job of changing the oil and regular other maintenance and forget about the cooling system so it's worth spending the time and the cost to go through it and make sure that you always have fresh coolant of course these are aluminum heads and blocks um, you don't want your coolant to get more than a few years old otherwise it gets uh, corrosive or can get corrosive and uh, could potentially over time start corroding the aluminum on the heads specifically the mating surface with the block and then eventually start um, slowly eating away at the head gaskets so um, and the type of coolant that you use is also very very important and I'll talk about that in a minute anyway so here's what I've got done so far uh, I've taken the radiator out as you can see um, and of course the shroud for the clutch fan is also gone um, this actual clutch fan I've replaced this uh, mechanism um, not that long ago actually about a year and a half ago so this is this is fairly new in that regard new in terms of miles and I've uh, pulled out the thermostat which sits um, let me just get a light in here the thermostat sits right in here inside this housing this is kind of a tricky thing to get off because it's three 10 millimeter bolts which are right here that hold this housing uh, to the the top part of the of the actual assembly here and this last this last bolt down here it's really difficult to get to um, you have to take the rubber hose that bridges the two connections to the water pump off and in many cases that hose is old and you'll have to end up cutting it off which is what I did um, once that hose is off then you can get to that that lower bolt that's that is down here if I can get my light to behave yeah so that lower bolt is down there 
and the only way to really get to it is a short extension uh, a quarter inch drive and a, of course 10 millimeter uh, socket and that's the only way to get it out and so uh, also you have to loosen the dipstick um, and take out the the um, the bolt that holds the dipstick in and you can you can see that right here so you have to take the dip dipstick loose and there's a there's an aluminum spacer in here actually a steel spacer in here that also comes out be careful you don't drop it um, you can see my dipstick uh, it, it broke and so I have a replacement dipstick coming anyway so once you get that out and it's a bit of a bear um, the whole assembly with the thermostat will come out and uh, after that, um, what I did is I flushed my cooling system with 12 gallons of distilled water. To do that, uh, take the thermostat out of the housing. It's spring-loaded, and these two ears here hold the thermostat in. And you have to kind of push it in. It's under a lot of tension. Push it in and then turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, and it'll pop out. And then you take this housing and put it back into the water pump, uh, just reconnect it. And then I had a spare piece of rubber hose that I just cut to fit to bridge this neck to the water pump um, for the actual, um, when I was actually, you know, going through and flushing the cooling system. And the reason I took the thermostat out is when, once you start the car, you don't have to wait for the thermostat to, to open. Um, you can just let the car run for a couple of minutes for that distilled water, the clean distilled water to mix with the old coolant, rather than waiting uh, five, 10 or more minutes for the thermostat to open. So this really provides good flow uh, clear open flow without the restriction of the thermostat being in there. So it's an extra step. Um, you do have to make sure you have another piece of replacement rubber hose, this 90 degree hose, if you've cut the old one out, which I did and most people do. So um, just a FYI there. Once that's done, um, you know, then you go through and you start the car and you go through several cycles of starting the car and mixing the, uh, the distilled water with the old coolant until um, the color of the fluid that comes out is as clear as the distilled water. And let me show you what that looks like. So I'll take you into the garage here and uh, you can see right here, this is the coolant I started with on the very left. It's sort of an orangey gold. And as I kept flushing it, you can see um, the, the coolant became more and more diluted until the very last one is clear, number eight. So that took about 12 gallons of distilled water. And please only use distilled water. Do not use any type of water from the tap or anything else, or drinking water. Distilled water is what you use. And the new coolant that you use on these cars is a is the blue coolant. It has the right phosphorus and silicate content for aluminum heads and blocks. It's basically the G48. Do not use the G05 like people have been using. Please use the G48. It's the right stuff for these cars. You can use a variety of brands. Uh, Beck Arnley make a great coolant that's um, the blue G48 or Pentacin. So, uh, or we just buy from Mercedes. Anyway, so be very careful on the coolant that you use. Do not use the green uh, stuff that's available that people put in, the, in their cars. Do not use that stuff. Do not use the G05. Use the blue G48 because it has the right mineral content for our cars. Anyway, so I wanted to share that with you. Well, let me, while I'm in here, here's uh, some things. Here's the, the piece that I made for flushing the coolant. I just cut up an old uh, radiator hose that I had in my, in my, on my shelf to fit um, the, the neck of the thermostat housing to the water pump. 
So that's the one I used. Here's the original one that I actually had to cut to take out of the car. You can see it's molded. It's a pre-molded one and it was so tight, I had to cut it out. Um, here's the brand new thermostat and these are all 80 degree thermostats. That's the only option for the M119. You cannot get a cooler thermostat or thermostat that opens earlier. You can only get an 80 degree thermostat and you, the only option that you can get is this whole thermostat with the neck. You cannot use just the regular thermostat like I did. I bought I bought a thermostat um, thinking that it was just uh, one without the housing. This will not work and I thought it would. I bought this from Rock Auto. It, it'll go back but it's an incorrect listing for the car. This will not work in the M119. So just a heads up guys on that. You have to buy the whole thermostat with the neck and the housing and the flange like this. It's not cheap. It's like 40 or 45 bucks for this whole thing. It comes with the rubber gasket. It's made by Borg Warner. That's the OEM brand and it's an 80 degree. Do not buy this. This will not work. Um, at the same time, I bought all brand new hoses. As you can see, radiator hoses and the hose from the expansion tank. I bought a brand new serpentine bank belt. This is the only belt that'll work on the on the M119. So it's the PK2510. So please remember that. That's the only belt that'll work. And I actually have some other new parts coming. I bought a new expansion tank um, from Mercedes that should be here this week. Um, so unfortunately, I can't show that on this video. Um, so that's that's the parts going in. Here's what the thermostat looks like when you take it out of the housing, by the way. So you can see the two ears that uh, actually fit onto these arms right here. Okay. All right. And uh, I'll show you the radiator. I bought a brand new radiator, radiator from CSF. It's an all aluminum radiator. Um, the stock radiator is actually okay. You can see it's dirty and it could probably be cleaned. Um, you can actually see the circles from the, where the electric fans sort of blow and their, uh, sort of their footprint. Um, nothing really wrong with this radiator. Um, it's can be cleaned and, and be reused. And lots of guys have three, 400,000 miles on the factory radiator. I decided to buy this aluminum radiator from CSF only because they make an incredible product. I've had really, really good um, results with aluminum radiators in a variety of cars that I own, including my 560 SEC. And they provide extremely efficient cooling because it'll cool through the end tanks and it has really good heat dissipation compared to the factory uh, radiator. This is 100% Bolton, uh, no modifications required. It's beautifully made. It's all TIG welded, of course. It has all the fittings for the transmission cooler lines and everything is, is really well made, as you can see. And also all the mounting ears are there. Um, beautiful piece, not super expensive. In fact, if you had to replace your stock radiator from Mercedes, the Bear, which is on the right. They're about the same price. So anyway, um, more to come on that. Looking forward to seeing how um, the car runs with the whole cooling system addressed. And uh, now that it's all apart, um, I'm gonna start putting it back together, but wanted to share that with you. Um, I guess one last thing to share too, while well, it's on my mind, the serpentine belt, right? So to get to the serpentine belt to take it off it's pretty simple on this car can ask for anything simpler really it's a torx socket and here's a tensioner right here and you want to turn this counterclockwise like this so you're turning it counterclockwise and and then you'll be able to um Put, uh, put some slack on the belt and then pull it over the, start pulling it over the pulleys. 
and of course installation is reverse um, so pretty simple mechanism um, you have to be careful rounding that belt because it's so long and you have to know exactly which what path it takes so just know uh, have a diagram handy I've done it a couple times now so it's not too bad and I think that's really it so hope you guys enjoy the video um, I'll do a follow-up um, once I have everything installed and looking forward to sharing the performance of the cooling system um, once it's all um, been perched and running uh, which will be in about a week or two and uh, I'm all definitely catch up with you guys then hope everybody's doing well and staying cool this summer and just remember um, some points on the right coolant to use on these engines it's very very important and you know if you have a m117 and a 560 or 500 the same thing applies i certainly recommend uh, using the blue g48 coolant um i I'm really steering away from the G05 based on some things I've been reading and uh, some issues that some owners that I know have been having. So um, just uh, be be very uh, sensitive to that. I guess if you use G05 and you flush it regularly, it's probably okay. But if you have a car like mine um, that tends to sit a bit, uh, probably a better idea if you use um, uh, the G48. Anyway, hope that helps and hope you guys enjoy this video and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.